Welcome to AP Circus. Like all the circus arts, juggling is a fundamentally human experience, and it's not just limited to the circus. A lot of people can juggle, and we bet everyone has at least tried to juggle. Sure, not everyone succeeds, but everyone tries. Whether we can physically juggle or not, we're all juggling schedules, responsibilities, emotions, and ideas all the time. Perhaps it's a sign of a universal human desire to do more and to be more. So it's no wonder that evidence shows that juggling goes back a long way in many cultures, and that from the start, it was linked to the deepest part of who we are. If that sounds too serious for something as fun as juggling, keep watching. If you watched our episode on the history of the circus, you'll remember that the earliest archaeological evidence we have of juggling goes back to the 11th dynasty of ancient Egypt, which started around 2300 BCE, more than 4,000 years ago. A tomb painting from that period shows four girls juggling circular objects. You'll notice that one girl has her arms crossed. Uh-huh, that's right, you go girl. Clearly, theatrical flair and juggling have gone together for millennia. Some scholars deduce that juggling had religious significance since round items in Egyptian times represented solar objects, birth, and death. Told you we'd go deep. Scholars have suggested that juggling existed in some forms in virtually all tribal cultures before and since, and that the juggler, who if you think about it, is suspending the normal rules of space and time, was often also a shaman, or priestly figure. Now if only we could suspend space and time, because we've still got a lot to cover in a few minutes. The idea of the juggler as an extraordinary figure also persists in ancient China, where stories about jugglers first appear in the literature of the spring and autumn period beginning around 700 BCE. One of these stories tells the tale of Zhang Yiliao, I think that's right, a warrior who could throw multiple objects into the air at once without dropping any of them. During one battle between warring states, Zhang stepped between two armies while juggling swords, bringing the fighting to a stop while everyone watched, amazed. Miraculously, he emerged without a scratch. So we know people were juggling swords almost 3,000 years ago. By the time of ancient Greece, jugglers seemed to have taken a few steps down the social ladder and had become roaming entertainers, juggling hoops, using both their hands and their feet and combining juggling with dancing and acrobatics. And so it goes throughout the Roman Empire and the Middle Ages in Europe. Historical evidence abounds of entertainers and others who juggle balls, knives, swords, shields, torches, and apples. It seems that whatever people could get their hands on, anywhere people are, they juggle. No wonder then that juggling is called the family matriarch of the manipulation disciplines by circus insiders. Over time, people have juggled alone or in groups and used all kinds of objects. You can see it at Cirque du Soleil today. Sometimes they combine it with another circus discipline like riding a unicycle. And sometimes on top of using their hands, feet and other parts of their body, they juggle while balancing. Family matriarch indeed. We like to think that the urge to juggle comes from another fundamental human characteristic. We love to play and we love to watch other people play. And no, throwing one ball up and down doesn't count as juggling, even if it is fun. By 1768, along came Philip Astley, who opened the first modern circus in London, England. You'll remember Philip from our video on the origins of the circus. He's the one who brought what we now call circus skills under one roof to perform along with trick riders on horses. Naturally, jugglers were part of the troupe. By 1793, a performer called John Bill Ricketts opened the first American circus and juggled on horseback for George Washington. George Washington could not tell a lie. He loved it. In 1821, Britons discovered Ramo Amy, the Indian juggler, the world's first professional juggler and a genuine celebrity. Yes, by the turn of the 20th century, juggling was everywhere entertainment could be found, in variety in music hall theaters and in vaudeville. The invention of rubber led to a tactical revolution. Until then, jugglers had to keep objects in the air. With rubber, they could incorporate bouncing balls off the floor into their routines. Jugglers like Britain's Paul Cinquevalli became huge stars. American Jim Harrigan, the first tramp juggler, became the first man to put jokes into his routine. DeWitt Cook was the first performer to introduce the now familiar jugglers' clubs into his act. Yes, the old matriarch had lots of life in her. Juggling survived into the 20th century and the introduction of electronic media. Jugglers and juggling came back into public consciousness in the 1970s with renewed interest in street performance. Cirque du Soleil embraced this. Since Cirque du Soleil started, we've included juggling acts in every one of our shows. As we've grown, the skill and artistry of our jugglers has grown as well. We welcome the greatest jugglers in the world who continue to develop new tricks and new ways to stun and delight audiences. And from its roots thousands of years in the past, the noble art of juggling continues to demonstrate the playful creativity that is so much of what makes us human. But enough talk. Mesdames et messieurs, on with the show. <laughs>